Hello, welcome to the Knitting Pipeline. This is the second extra, I'm going to call it, instead of supplement. I'm going to try to remember to do that. This is in addition to my audio podcast, Knitting Pipeline. And the last time I recorded was before Thanksgiving, and it is now December 23rd. So it's been about four weeks, and I was planning on a four to six week update on video. Thanks to everyone who watched the first episode. I really didn't know when I recorded whether I would actually put it up there, but the response was very encouraging. Thank you for your support, and I'll try to do what I can. I had two suggestions. One was to try to not have glare on my glasses. That came from a few people. They said it very nicely, by the way. And I think that I've accomplished that. I'm in a different place in the house. It's an overcast day. And my husband went to work out, so I thought this would be a good time to record when it's relatively quiet. We have a bit of a challenge because there's a house going up on one side of our house. So they are putting the roof on and doing all kinds of noisy things, but it was raining today, so they're not too busy over there. Okay, I have a whole table full of things to show you that I'm really excited about. And these are all projects that have been finished after the last video update. And then I have a little quilting at the end as well. So thank you so much for watching and for coming back if you already watched the first Knitting Pipeline Extra. The first one is what you see in the back. Oh, let me say what I'm wearing first because I'll forget that later. This is the Magic Cake Ruffle Shawl. I thought it of all my shawls, it looked the most seasonal. And actually, I don't even need it today because it's really quite warm. But I'll leave it on as long as I can. And this is my own pattern. <laughs> I still haven't gotten used to everything being a mirror image. And it does have a nice ruffle on it. And this is used or made using scraps of fingering weight yarn or whatever weight you want to do. Okay, the very first thing you'll see behind me, this is my Rhinebeck sweater. I talked about this in episodes 25, 225 and 226, and you might remember I had quite a few setbacks. Oh, sorry, the other, the other suggestion was the volume could be louder. I think that might be because of the device you're listening on, because when I tested it, it was fine on my MacBook and my laptop, but on the iPad, it's not as loud. So I'll try to address that by talking a little louder. I have the MacBook or the, the record the laptop closer to me. And also, then if that doesn't work, maybe I'll try a different microphone. I'm just using the one that's on the computer because it seemed to be actually pretty good. So back to my Rhinebeck sweater. This is based on the Elizabeth Zimmerman percentage system. There we go. Starting at the bottom, you, I think you can see I did a cabled cuff and then a row of garter stitch in one of the accent colors. This is bottom up on both sleeves and body. And then it is steeped down the front. The buttons I got on Etsy, they're wooden buttons, and I cannot think of the shop now, but it is in either 225 or 226 episodes, if you wanna go back and look at the show notes. So the only modif well, I've made quite a few modifications to the Elizabeth Zimmerman percentage system. And this is from Knitting Without Tears or Knitter's Almanac, and I think some of her other books. Sorry, the buttons keep hitting the table here. But I don't know if you can see, there is some shaping. No, I can't really show it here. At, well, you know what way shaping <laughs> looks like. So there's way shaping, and then I tried to get as many colors of Quince and Company Chickadee. That's what this is all knit out of, is Quince and Company Chickadee. The base color is pomegranate. And then I incorporated as many colors as I could that I thought were somewhat unexpected. And I know that there's River and Carrie's Yellow. There might be a little bit of, I might have to look. 
there is a little bit of egret. I didn't think there was any egret in it. And there is honey and Frank's plum. And then I managed to get orange in it. The orange is poppy. And there's not a whole lot of it, but I wanted to see if I could pull off orange with this pomegranate colorway because normally you wouldn't put these two together. I wanted to have unexpected colors in this and I think I achieved that. My, my first attempt, let me show you because I still have it. I took it out because it was too big, but I also thought it was rather uninspired. This is my swatch here. And it just didn't really speak to me. And then I have the yoke that I started and decided to take out. And the way I took that out was instead of unraveling all of it, I snipped a stitch and just picked it out so that I could start off right away. The other thing that I did a little bit different on this was, and you can, actually, I don't think I'll go through all this because it's in the audio, but just real quick, the top band here is tapered towards the front of the sweater. <laughs> I just can't do that, but you can see it. It is short rows so that it's not as tall in the front. And there's also some back shaping here. Move this string there. There we go. I'm really happy with it. There, you can see it. So that is my Rhinebeck sweater, which did not go to Rhinebeck. It was with me in spirit. And it is based on the Elizabeth Zimmerman percentage system in Quinson Company Chickadee, which I absolutely adore. The next finished object is the Rodeo Drive Poncho by Stacy Perry. Kind of a little close to the camera for showing these, but I chose the wide neck on this and it is done in Knit Picks Capra in the platinum colorway. It takes 10 skeins. It's a lot of plain stockinette with the cable every other round to keep your interest and I really, really like this. It is a great travel accessory. I've worn it a lot. It's wonderful to just put on if you're going to the grocery store. And actually today it's 50 some, 56 degrees in December. So I can wear it today as well. I'm gonna take this off because it is just making me too warm. Plus I have something else to show, show you and try on. The next item is the Morgan doll by Susan B. Anderson. And this is a bowl that Susan gave me as a gift, which I love. And it seems that Morgan likes to live in it. Susan was the guest teacher or guest or artist in residence at the Knitting Pipeline Main Retreat. And this was the workshop. And at the retreat, I actually finished the whole doll. But then over Thanksgiving, I knit the dress and the little garter stitch sweater and then a little shawl. That's the back side. Oh, here it is. Yeah, there we go. The little shawl that ties around her. I think she's just adorable. Here's the back of her and here's the front. This little, this little piece of red yarn, I just tied on the garter stitch cardigan to make sure that I wouldn't get the front and back turned around when I was knitting it. And then I thought it looked kind of festive for the season. And I have her in her bowl, sorry, bump that, on my kitchen counter with a little sprig of greenery, artificial greenery. But Susan is a wonderful teacher and I eventually want to make all of the dolls I have to reach. This is the kit from Quince and Company if you want to make it from the kit. The kit comes with all of the colors that you need including buttons for the cardigan and the book. Mary 
Millie and Morgan by Susan B. Anderson. And it's just, the instructions are wonderful. And I just keep everything in here. Even the polyester fiber fill is in there. And I think they sourced it in the U.S. I think I have enough left that I could definitely knit something else. And while we're talking about Susan, this is a book that I reviewed on the show. And we gave away a copy. It just came out. December 15th, official release it is Susan B. Anderson's Kids Knitting Workshop, Spiral Bound, and it's just an amazing book with 17 great projects in it, and you can listen to the review in episode, I think it's episode 233, maybe, yeah, I think 233. I forget. I think I forgot to say that it is Quince and Company Chickadee. If I didn't say that, all of this is Chickadee as well. And I wanted to mention that. And then moving right on with Quince and Company Chickadee, I needed a little project this last weekend to just take a break from the socks I was knitting on. And my daughter-in-law had asked that I make these booties for our granddaughter. And they are... Peary Weary Booties by Carrie Bostick Hogue. And they're in the Quince and Company Chickadee in Egret, Carrie's Gold, Carrie's Yellow, and I think this is Cumlian's Gulp, but I used Storm. Other than that, I used the same colors, and I don't have mine with me because I already sent them off, so they would have them by Christmas. I did a little, a little bit differently. Uh, she has another pattern that's striped all the way down, so I combined the two. I did a little bit of this first pattern of Fair Isle at the top, and then, whoops, I better get the rest. I don't think anybody's going to try to read that book, but I don't know. I think that's kind of silly to hide every single thing, because if somebody's going to steal a pattern, they're going to steal a pattern. But anyway, I did the Fair Isle at the top, and then striping all the way down, and I lengthened it a little bit. If you're in doubt about the size of a foot, you can easily find what the average length of a person's foot is by looking it up on the internet. And I found out that a six month to a 12 month old is, I think it was 4.25 inches. So I made it between 4.25 and four and a half inches. So we'll see if it fits. If you read the projects, some people say that it doesn't fit that well. But she has another pattern called December Booties that I think she's adapted from this and it might work better. By the way, sorry. The book is Fair Isle Style by Mary Jane Mucklestone. Actually, that's the only pattern in the book that I think I would make, but I do find inspiration in the other patterns. That's Fair Isle Style. Okay. <clears throat> Uh-oh, I forgot to talk about this. Well, it was out of my reach. Here we go. When I was working on the Rhinebeck sweater from the Elizabeth Zimmerman, Zimmerman Percentage System. Oh, by the way, this is a fat squirrel bag, sweater bag. This is from the Knitting Pipeline Retreat. It has the, the other one there, the date on it. Sarah bought that for me. But when I was trying to decide the colors... I used this box and it really helped me here you can see even the colors that these aren't necessarily all the colors I used but I put it back together so you could see how I did it kind of gave me an idea of how the colors would play together and I labeled them I think I used nine colors in there and this is a box from Harry and David. My mother always gets the pears for us for Christmas. And I think I like the box as much as I like the pears, although pears are really good. And if you don't have a box like this or you don't get the pears from your mother, Target and other places that sell organizational things, they have similar boxes. And right now the ornament boxes that you can pack ornaments in would be an option. And here's an I-cord that I knit, I, this was an idea on a craftsy class, I think Mary Jane Mucklestone's class, to knit an I-cord using 
the colors that you're thinking of, and then you can also coil it up. These aren't the colors I ended up using because I thought they were not too exciting, but you can make it into a little snail and then sort of see how they're playing together. Someone asked about the box, so I want to make sure that I showed that. The other thing is I wanted to show you that I've started, sorry, there's a little crinkling here. Got to get it over with fast. I started making little cards of my Quince and Company colors. When I use a color, I wrap a little bit of it around the tag and I keep them in a little Ziploc and maybe I'll have to have a bigger bag. That's Frank's Plum. And I do this because if I'm thinking of colors, I can look at them in a smaller frame than I would if, you know, just get them all out. Whichever ones I've used. This is the pomegranate that I used in the sweater. Also, if you needed to make a small repair, then you would have a sample of the exact color. The next bit of knitting are my Knit Circus socks. I actually have a bunch of socks to show you, but let's do the Knit Circus first. I haven't worn them yet and I'm really wanting to, but I wanted to leave them on the sock blocker so you could see them. Here they are. This is from knitcircus.com and I talked quite a bit about these in episode 233. They are toe up with an afterthought heel and the striping on here is just so incredibly amazing. Go to knitcircus.com and look at the dye, the dyeing there. It's, it's incredible. She is really an artist. And I did just a ribbing up at the top. Really, they're so pretty. They don't need too much. Those are my sock blockers from SSK 2013. A couple sock blockers. I don't actually dry the socks usually on the sock blockers, but they are nice for photographing and showing. So I'm so excited about those and I can't wait to have another bit of Knit Circus yarns. Here are some of the men's socks I've knit. These are going off for a January birthday in the family. These are the bootstrap socks by Laura Neal. I love this pattern. It has a little garter stitch band that goes up and down. And one of the advantages of that is that you can keep track of your rows very easily and match your tops exactly without having to mark every time. I'm not a stickler on that anyway, but it is sort of nice. And then that band continues all the way down into the heel area. They have a really unusual heel on the bottom. Let's see if I can take it out. Maybe I can show it. You know, it doesn't show up very well, but you can go, you know, you can't really see it, but it is unusual because there's a little bit of Kitchener stitch down here. And I, I really love knitting these. I think I've made four pair now of the bootstrap socks by Laura Neal from Sock Architecture. This is Miss Babs. The yarn is Miss Babs. I think it's her something toe. <laughs> I can't think what, it's, what it is, but y'all know how to find Miss Babs. And then Kate Atherley's basic rib socks in the Fiber Story yarn that I found at Stitches Midwest. This is a classic top-down three-in-one rib, and I love this pattern. I'll be talking about a new book by Kate Atherley that has this pattern in it, and there's a video that accompanies it, so I'm going to look at that over the holiday. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here's another pair of three-in-one rib out of Knit Picks Felici. Those are men's size as well. I have not knit very many socks for myself this year, but I'm well supplied. Here is a pair of afterthought heel socks that I'm actually repairing the afterthought heel in there. And this is my 
needle keeper from Kitchen Counter Crafter, and so I'll probably get those fixed soon. I have a fat squirrel bag with my current sock project in it, and in it I have a couple of tools of the trade. I consider them important now that I am knitting socks. I almost always have a pair of socks on the needle. One is the Socket To Me. This is available in yarn shops and online, and it has the women's sizes in U.S. centimeters, European sizes, and Mexican sizes, and the men's and infants and children. So you can just ask what their shoe size is, and it'll tell you the foot length, and then you can figure it out from there. There it is. This is a really handy tool, and then there's a ruler on the side. My other favorite tool that I learned about from Susan B. Anderson, and I got one of these in my goodie bag at SSK, it's the Sock Ruler at thesockruler.com. You can also get it at Friends and Fiber. And my tip is to whatever pair of socks I'm working on, I put a piece of this post-it type tape for the size. Right now, it's on my size, I guess, because I'm knitting a pair of socks for myself. And I put that tape there, and that way I can measure it. You can use this. Sorry, my phone's ringing, and... I'm not going to go answer it, to measure the cuff on a top down or the foot. You would just insert it the other way, and you can also use it for toe up. It makes the measuring a lot more accurate because you're flattening the sock out and spreading it out a little bit on your ruler. Maybe looking at it this way might make more sense. And then I haven't used this one yet, but Jan of Friends in Fiber gave me this one. She's Friends in Fiber on Etsy.com, which has a child's and an infant ruler. I wonder if you could just adapt this for mittens, because people's hand sizes and their foot sizes are kind of related. Usually, if you have small hands, you have small feet. That's the way it works. Okay. I don't know if I said this is Fat Squirrel Bag as well. Another tip that I talked about on the audio cast is when I do my gauge swatches, here we go, that's straight. <laughs> I knit up the swatch and then I started putting, when I count, I put, I count one, two, three, four, five in the stitches and then I put a straight pin and then I count five and put in a straight pin. And that way it's much easier. Usually I'd get about to 15 or 20 and I, my eyes, UPS or FedEx, my eyes would go a little buggy, and this is just an easier way for me to count for the gauge swatch, and that was for my Rhinebeck sweater. And then I knit the sleeve first. Just had to check and make sure that it, there wasn't someone standing there. And I knit the gauge swatch first, and then I'll start knitting the sleeve. And I know when I'm knitting in the round that my gauge is different, so then I do adjust for that. By the way, the Fiber Story, I wanted to mention this. The Fiber Story, which is this yarn that I just think is gorgeous. It is available at Warm and Fuzzy in Raleigh, North Carolina. That's a shop I visited last summer when our granddaughter was born. And I didn't know of this yarn when I was there. And I'm not sure she carried it when I was there either. But now I know I can get it from her at Warm and Fuzzy in Raleigh. I'm going to ignore that. The next piece is Summer Tide Shawl by Curious Handmade. That person is not going away. <laughs> by Curious Handmade. It's my neighbor. Probably has something for me. But this is by Curious Handmade, the Summer Tide. I'm going to cover up my face now. Summer Tide Shawl. It is huge. I knit it in Seven Sisters Arts in the Matrika base, which is fingering weight. It is merino and silk. I know I have to talk a little louder when I, I think this thing is about eight feet wide because I can't even reach from one end of it to the other. It is huge. I'm gonna put it on so you can see. I am 
just nuts about it. I'm not going to look at the camera when I do that or I'll get all turned around. I love the lace, I love the colors, and the feel of it. It's just amazing. Highly recommend this pattern. All of Helen's patterns are great, but in particular, I like this. This is the second one I made, but it's the only one that I didn't chicken out on and did the full meal deal, you might say. Here we go. That's Summertide Mystery Cow by Helen Stewart. The person's still standing there. I'll call them later. Okay, let me check my notes. I'm trying to keep this fairly short, but I think everything else is going to be quilting. So I'm going to talk a little bit about quilting. So if you're not interested, thanks for watching. And if you are, or you think you might be, I'm going to move on. I've been on a quilting binge, although I haven't done much at all in the last month or two because I finished up a project before I went to Rhinebeck, I think, and then I just haven't gotten anything going. So I haven't been actively quilting, but I think during this holiday break, I will be doing more. I wanted to show you, I mean, if you're a seasoned quilter, if you've been in a fabric shop lately, you know about this, but I think it was six years ago, I walked into a fabric store and I saw this, and this is the exact one. It's a charm pack. That's the Moda name for it. I think it probably is trademarked. And this one is called Boutique. It has these amazing colors in it. And I still haven't done anything with it, but I call this the gateway drug to quilting because they're usually around $10 now. This one was $8, so it's, it's getting up there in years now. But it's just so amazing because you get such a wide variety of fabric in. kind of gives you that scrappy look for quilting. I think that in this one, oh, it doesn't look like any duplicates at all in this. So you have 40 different fabrics for $8. That is a great value. And if you go and look in a quilt shop, you'll find projects, books that are based on charm packs. So those are five inch squares. And then are they five and a half? I think they're 42 squares. That doesn't say, I can't remember, but five or five and a half. Here are a couple of other ones that I've purchased. This one's called Block Party. It's also Moda. I think all of them I have are Moda packets. If you want to make a baby quilt, you could just get one of these charm packs and just sew the squares together and you could have one. This is one that I thought my kids might like for a table runner or something. It's called uh, Real Time and has kind of more modern fabrics in it. And then Kansas Troubles, it's also by Moda. Kansas Troubles is a pretty famous line and it's all kind of traditional and they always have these same kind of color schemes. I like Kansas Troubles a lot. And then another way to buy pre-cut fabric, well, let's back up a little bit before I, no, I'll go ahead with that. There's 10 inch squares called layer cakes and I have one of those downstairs, but I couldn't locate it right away. And then there are jelly rolls, which are two and a half inch strips. And jelly roll looks like this. This is a William Morris fabric print. And I've already used this. And I liked it so much that I bought another one because you have to buy these fabrics when the line is out. Once they discontinue a line, then you can get it on eBay and pay through the nose. But if you like it, you better get it. Most of these I actually buy on Craftsy. And if you go to my blog and click on the Craftsy uh, button, it will take you to Craftsy. And the prices are just amazing on Craftsy. But I like to support my local yarn shop too. So usually I will buy this to help me get started. And then my background fabric, my batting, well actually I buy the batting now from 
craftsy as well. But I buy thread and other things. I support my local quilting shops, Peddler's Way Quilt Company and the Quilt Corner a lot because this will just get you started and then you still need a lot of other supplies. And then you also can get fat quarter bundles. My daughter-in-law, I sent her a link to this and I have it upside down, this fabric and these are her colors totally from the nursery. And so I bought this from Mass Drop and my friend Nancy Isomay on Ravelry got me onto Mass Drop and it was a good price. And the quality of this fabric is really amazing. It's by Birch. And I don't even want to take the ribbon off until I'm ready <laughs> to use it. I don't know what I'll use it for yet, but probably a baby quilt or child's quilt. And I might buy some of the coordinating fabric so that I have it. So if the lines gets discontinued, I'll still have some. Oh, you could find something else to go with it, I'm sure. But Okay, so those are some of the pre-cuts that you can get if you don't want to do a lot of cutting. And when I got a charm pack the first time, after I got that first one, I went back and I got another charm pack that I wouldn't mind breaking up. And I made this table runner. And I just used a tutorial online for a disappearing nine patch. This is usually out on my porch and the back is just plain if I want to use the back. And it is pretty faded because there's so much sun out there. But all I did was just do the disappearing nine patch and then I didn't even stitch in the ditch. I didn't know about that at the time. So I just top stitched about a quarter of an inch around the pieces. So basically you put a nine patch together and then you cut it four ways and repiece it. And it's super simple to do and it makes it look like you kind of know what you're doing, even if you don't, but. So that one's always out on my porch because I don't, I have it on the little table where I keep all my knitting stuff. And then this summer I bought one called Front Porch. Here's the back of it. This was a charm pack and all I did on this was I made half square triangles and then sewed them all together. And it was super simple. I did the free motion. I, I like doing free motion quilting. I took a craftsy class and a real life class, a two hour real life class. So I did the quilting on this using my brother machine that I think is one of the most amazing bargains. I feel like I'm looking through a little window at you. Okay. And then I just did the binding out of the same fabric that I did on the back. Okay, I'm going on a little long here, but I think that's all I was going to say about the quilting. But I have a lot more quilting to talk about, and hopefully I'll get going again here in the break. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful holiday. and. Happy New Year. Thanks.